Well, thank you very much, uh, distinguished panelists, and uh, His Excellency uh, 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 Yusuf Al Saba for for the introductions and everything. Um, I'll just share my uh, uh, screen and presentation. If I can find it, there we are. Um, just like to say, being the last panelist, um, up against the wall for time, obviously. I presume that the demurrage will be coming my way. Right, um, a lot of the panelists have been focusing on what has happened. Um, I'm gonna look a little bit more about what we're trying to do in the future. Um, obviously, RSGT has been around now for about 10 years. We started off small, uh, looking at half a million containers in 2010. Now in 2020, we've done more than 5 million. So that's a fair achievement for ourselves. Um, also, one of the things, and I have to look at the partner for this, is that we've expanded. We were uh, good enough to achieve the concession for the North Sea, uh, sorry, North Container Terminal, which was previously a GCT Gulf Tainer concession. Um, and coming with that was also a number of personnel. So what also happened to us in that period of April, 2020, is that we increased our workforce by 25%. So we went from 1,000 people to 1,400 people, which is a huge shift for our uh, intake of personnel, people working together, training together, and also how to manage your own safety culture. Okay. Our safety culture, our behaviors, our look at safety is based around our core values values responsible care we see it we own it customer centric we take a safe responsibility of our community dynamic we proactively eliminate potential safety hazards and integrity we are safe okay and and we can't do that without our people i don't actually have a slide on covid so i'll hang it here covid has obviously been a huge impact for everybody in 2020 um, we as a, as, as a company, um, we at its peak had <clears throat> 55 people who had COVID with another 135 people who were isolated as social contacts. And as early as the end of July, we were down to only having two people who were isolated because of social contacts and were living outside of our facilities. So currently, we're cycling between zero, one, two people having COVID, being isolated because of family members, but all of our COVID cases currently are outside of our camps and our residences. We, through the whole COVID period, ran a huge campaign, again, similar to all other companies, of making sure that people wore their masks, making sure that people kept their social distance, making sure that people kept up their social hygiene or their personal hygiene as well, reducing the number of people that were working in the offices, maximum working at home. But again, as soon as July came along, we went back to working in the offices. We structured, restructured our offices and our layouts to ensure that we had that social distancing. Okay, again, our industry is labor intensive. We need people on the ground to actually operate the terminal. And that's again is where the crucial factor is, is that we need our people to work with us, which ours have done quite well. I won't say that they've done it 100% all the time because we're people, we're fallible. And again, it, it's, it's when people are moving from one place to another, waiting for buses, getting off buses, getting on buses. That's where we had the issues more than anything else. Again, we had great support from the Jeddah Islamic Port, from Awani, the Saudi Ministry of Health, Saudi Ministry of Interior, <clears throat> and also the Jeddah local municipality, who assisted us in auditing our processes, auditing our facilities, auditing our residences, and supporting us in the programs that we were trying to implement successfully. And even last week, we had an, another uh, audit from the Ministry of uh, Health, and they gave us some pointers, which we implemented uh, on the spot. Okay, so again, HSC development within RSGT, where did we come from? 
and where are we going in 2021? Um, our construction of the terminal started in 2009 to 2010. So we haven't been along, around as long as uh, GCT, but we've been around for at least 10 years. So we've had continued growth from 2010 to 2020. This year, we took over a neighboring facility, which increased our workforce by 20, 25%, which resulted in a dilution of our resident safety culture and behaviors at the time. So our program is very much looking at how can we re-embed or reinvent our safety culture and our behaviors and make sure that that goes throughout the whole uh, population of people that are working for us. And the focus that we have is refresher training, core values, HSC skills, lifesavers, and also a look at behavioral-based uh, safety which is a key mechanism throughout any people-based organization. So lifesavers and the one that you see in front of you today are the lifesavers that are actually operational very much in the uh, oil industry. And these are the lifesavers that are also promoted by the International Oil and Gas Producers Association, which we're utilizing. And you'll see the top line, if you'll see that here, is uh, the, 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 the fatal five that APMT terminal had identified many, many years ago. And these are the same ones that are also seen as being key items or key safety factors within the oil industry. Um, coming from the oil industry, I look at the maritime industry and I've worked very much in the maritime industry as well. And safety is safety. It's not rocket science. The process that we have in the oil industry are the same processes that we operate in the ports industry and uh, in, 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 in whatever. If you want to put it into pharmaceuticals, it's the same processes. And it's just looking at the different levels of uh, implementation that is key. Okay. So because of our expansion, that's where we saw the dilution in our safety and we saw uh, an uptake in incidents and LTIs, unfortunately. So our focus is on the emphasis on HSC. So again, refocusing our management and supervisory responsibility and accountability for HSC, refocusing the HSC uh, element within our supervisory processes, and taking our employees and not just the newcomers, but also taking the existing people that we have in our organization and providing them with refresher training, looking at their basic skills, looking at their specialized skills and doing this on an annual basis. I mean, previously we've done uh, refresher training on an as ad hoc basis, but we're now looking at this as being a formal requirement that people on an annual basis do get refreshed, okay? The other element that we're looking at, which is behavioral side, is uh, we have a program called Behavioral Improvement and Consequent Management. And we'll all see those words, improvement and consequence. And this includes running uh, an award scheme, which we've done for a long time, which also includes financial rewards and recognition. But on the other side, we have the consequences, which is the fines and reduction or even and the loss of bonuses. So on the one hand, people get praised, but on the other hand, people do need to get punished in one way or another. They do need to feel that they're uh, not achieving um, uh, the, the HSC results that we desire from them as, as people, firstly, and also secondly, as an organization. So the execution of that comes with the new employees and contractors that we're focusing on at the moment is the HSE inductions, the core values, lifesavers, basic and specialized skills. And for our visitors, making sure that they have the HSC induction as well so that they understand where we come from, from an HSE perspective. The refresher training is looking at all the new people that came in again from 2020. We're also looking at the annual refresher of all our personnel. We're looking at vacationers. So people have been on holiday for more than a month. If you're on holiday for a month, you don't think about work, in which case safety becomes a backseat to what you're actually thinking about at that time. And then obviously those personnel who are not following the safety processes that we have in place, they go back to do refresher training as well. 
competence and awareness of people is very, very key because if the person is not competent to do the work that he's doing, he's not aware of the safety that is required and the skills that are required to actually do that, to that work, in which case he becomes a danger to himself and his colleagues. So we're looking at new skills, certificate of training, broadening the personal viewpoint of people. So it's an expansion, which is part of behaviors. It is not just looking, focusing on what I'm doing, it's what am I doing and how does that affect others, which is very, very key. And updating of training materials. And information and communication is also key because at the end of the day, nobody likes to be treat like, treated like a mushroom. Everybody wants to know what's happening, what's, uh, uh, what, what's, what's happening uh, around them and how that's going to affect them. So we run toolbox talks on a continuous basis at every shift change. We run toolbox talks at any uh, activity that is critical. We run toolbox talks on any uh, permit to work, uh, permitted uh, and authorized uh, required uh, activities. We have a mass communication system, which is run on WhatsApp. We uh, this year also implemented an electronic uh, safety management system which has streamlined our, our, our reporting systems for incidents and, and observations and new misses, but it's also given us a mechanism and a, and a way for others from, from, from who, who, who have access to actually report into this. And we currently rolled this out to 500 people within uh, RSGT itself. And uh, by the first quarter of next year, will have rolled that out to everyone. So I'm talking about 1400 people will have access to provide observations into our ESMS, which we will then be able to manage, operate, troll, find out what the issues are. And like everything else, to do any kind of analysis, to look at the future, to try and find out where we want to go, we have to look at the past. And in which case we have the data, we can analyze it and we can look at where we need to go to next. The other thing obviously is that we're gonna look at information or have information boards and bulletin boards and we're running campaigns and topics and campaigns and topics can be as, as little as eating healthy to working at heights to make sure you have the right authorizations when you're working. So, expectations from our implementation is at a division and department level greater emphasis on safety responsibility and accountability greater personal and collegial safety because it is about us going home at, 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 at the end of every shift but it's also about my colleague going home at the end of every shift so it's talking about us and who we're working with from an employee and contractors uh, point of view we want to make sure that they know the core values, appreciate the lifesavers, improve their approach to HSC, ensure that they have job competence and are an influence, can influence the uh, success of RSGT as a business entity. And visitors, provide them an insight with our core values, lifesavers and our approach to HSC. Our future, at the end of the day, today we have a lot of people working on the ground is that good? Obviously it's good because it employs people. On the downside is the fact that people are the weak link in the chain. Uh, they drive the trucks that make the crashes. They work at heights and forget to put on their belts. So where we're moving to as an organization is looking at, at automation. So today we're in the planning phase we're looking at automating our horizontal trans uh, 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 transportation. We've recently bought two new large cranes, which are fully automated, and we're setting up the control uh, panels for those at the moment. We're looking at digitalization and automation, and uh, um, his excellently noted it previously already, and um, uh, Captain Maktoum uh, noted that as well, is the truck appointment system, is reducing the number of trucks that we have on the terminals at any one time, and um, doing things by remote control, as I mentioned earlier. Um, that, in a way, brings me to the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free. Thank you.